away. <laughs> oh, here we are then. Right. Now, come on, Victoria. Let's, uh, let's go and find some thermals. Thermals? What are thermals? Hmm? Well, thermals, they're, they're, um, they're like pockets of air. They kind of pockets. Trousers of pocket. Ah, <laughs> so does air. <laughs> Private? It never used to be. Come on! Hey! Into the sky! Look at that well, in his pocket. Here we go, go on then. Let out more string, quick, go, go on, Victoria, quick, run, Come run. It. Come on then, Captain, the winds are nor nor easterly. <laughs> oh, maybe they're down there with me. Oh, pretty well gone, he wasn't was here, you can tell us. Hey, he'd be in a sailor at all. <laughs> all right, all right. Go on then, let have a string. Come on, Victoria, let it go, let it go. Oh, on. No, higher, higher. You're not pulling it. The devil do you think right. you're doing? Hey, you got a bad hand, please. Hold on, sir, hold on. Well, kids have always flown their kites in this field since... since I can't remember when. Can't you read? This is private land. Yeah, but Mr Whitworth never used to mind, sir. Mr Whitworth is dead. I own this land now. You are trespassing. But we've always played here. Oh, no, sweetheart. Come on, we'll find another field. Post your order, please. Mm -hmm. Telephone account. Uh, three pounds, two and six, I believe. I'm awfully sorry, Brigadier. There isn't enough in your post office account. Oh, really? Oh, dear. Well, I, I didn't look too closely. Still, the army pension's due next week. That should fill the coffers up. <laughs> ah, Miss Pilchester. Mm. You do look well. Good afternoon, hey. Brigadier. Good day, Mrs. George. Oh, I think I'm so sorry for him. He only just managed to pay his electric last month. Oh, dear. I'll put it down then, Mrs. Battersby. Thank you, Mrs. Dawes. Straight left arm. Robert! Hello? Read this. There is about to be a vacancy on the Rural District Council. Ah, splendid. And you are going to fill it. Me? You. But what do I know about councils? You only need to know that councillors can make things happen. Right. Um, what sort of things, Frida? Yeah, what have we been talking about for the last six months, Robert? Goodwood. Now, this chap, Popham, has had to resign because he had a heart attack. <laughs> Serve him right! <laughs> ah, yes. Now, Popham. Now, the name's familiar. Isn't he the chap who's... Against our plans for South Hill. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's it. Spoiling the natural beauty, etc. Well done. Now, you are going to take his place and push it through. Ah. How do I do that, Frida? You put your name down as a candidate and you get yourself elected. Oh, don't worry, it'll be a walkover. No one else will bother to stand. But what about my golf? There'll be plenty of time for that when you're on the council. Now, we must start cultivating local influence. I found out something very useful. That boring old brigadier who's chairman of the parish council is on his uppers. Shouldn't be hard to get him on our side. Robert, ask him round for drinks. 
The Brigadier? But wasn't he Indian Army, though? Isn't Lady Chalk recently elevated to the beer ridge? Pop, don't. We're a long way off yet. Oh, right. Sorry, sweetheart. Well, how's this lot going? Selling plenty of pheasant chicks, are you? Mm, not nearly enough. Oh. I must have driven a hundred miles today. Hardly enough to cover the cost of petrol. Oh, dear. Look as though you could do with a good night's kit. <laughs> Hello, Ma. Oh. Oh. Has he been a good boy? Oh, of course. He's a sweetheart, isn't he, Oscar? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, Sam Popham's in hospital. Yeah, shame. Heart attack, it says. Yeah. All right, and his condition is satisfactory, so that's all right, then. We should take him a nice big steak and kidney pudding and a big bottle of stout. That'll cheer him up. Yeah, that's a good idea, Ma. You know, he's been like a dose of sorts he has on that council. You can do the same tomorrow, could you, Ma? Yeah. Just the morning. Of course, yes. It's good as gold, ain't you? Bye. <laughs> now, listen, I've got an extra chicken and ham pie here for your tea. All you've got to do is pop it in the oven. Ma, and then what I'd do without no. you. Mm, both of you. <laughs> Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Come on. Come on. There you go. Thanks, Ma. Right. Bye, Pop. Bye, love. Yeah. Not much point then buying a brewery if you're not going to live to enjoy the beer. Oh, hello. Uh, Tom Sargent here, Bristow's. I just need to order... Y yes, but I know it was all taken care of. Before he went abroad, Mr Bristow made a particular point of settling Sorry, Charlie, there's a pie in the oven. Never mind. Marriott. Hmm? You don't think we've bitten off more than we can chew, do you? I mean, look at us. We scarcely see John Blenheim. I wonder whether we should just cut our losses, tell Bristow to forget about the whole thing. After all we've gone through? I'm giving up now, Charlie. The solicitor's been on to me again. Will we be able to finalise in time? 20 days. Did you ask about the money for our hops? Yes, of course I did. For about the 50th time. Same old story. The man's nerve I can't get over. Nagging us when he hasn't even paid. Mr Bristow's still in Monte Carlo. Nobody else is authorised to sign the cheques. I told you we should never have taken that holiday. And I told you we needed the break. We're going to get this brewery, Charlie. Husband about? Uh, uh, we could try the cow shed. How are you today? Uh, I mustn't complain. You take each day as it comes when you get to my age. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. General's here to see you. Oh. 
Do you ask him to come in? Make sure he wipes his shoes first, though, won't you? <laughs> Hello, General. Yeah, what can I do for you today? What are you knocking? Wonder if I might have a word. Yes, have as many words as you like. This is not an exactly a job that fills me with bon homie, as the French would say. <laughs> Still, it's got to be done. Charlie wants it for his op gone. I expect you've heard about Sam Popham. Yes, I have, poor old chap. How is... Mara and I was thinking of popping over there to see him in hospital. Well, thankfully, he's on the mend, oh, huh? so I hear. Nevertheless, like in the fact is, he's left a gap on our rural district council. Yeah, shame. He was good at it, too. And as chairman of the parish council, I've been mulling over a few names as possible replacements. Oh, oh well, who have you come up with? I always thought that Mr Dawes at the post office would be good at something like that. No, not him. He's far too dithery by half. What about uh, oh, Edith? Edith Pilchester. She'd be good. She needs a job with a bit of dignity. Yeah, yeah, take her mind off that George business as well. Yeah, or you come to that, General. You, I mean, you'd be ideal. Oh, now, come on, General, you don't think... <laughs> oh, that's a good one, that is. Well, that's real fruity, that, General. Hey? <laughs> I'm absolutely serious, Larkin. Can you see that? Councillor Larkin, OBE. <laughs> Mr Sidney Larkin, MP! No, no, no. Sir Sidney Larkin, Prime Minister. Oh, yeah, I can just see him moving into number 10. Oh, yeah, that'd be good. Nice little drum, that. Easy access to the West End. <laughs> this is no joke, Larkin. <laughs> I've talked it over with a few people locally, and we all believe that you're the best man for the job. Well, thank you very much for the thought, General. I appreciate the offer, but uh, no thank you. I don't want anything to do with this council business, no. You can't stand anything official, you see, General. No. But you're ideal, Larkin. You're shrewd, you've got all that energy, and you care about the area. Thank you. As I said, I appreciate the thought, but N-O spells no. If you'll excuse me, the manure is calling. General. No hard feelings, eh, General? Of course not, dear lady. Tell you what, I've got to drop a homemade cider needs testing. You fancy a tipple? I don't mind if I do. <laughs> Primrose, come to give me a hand? I wish I could. I've got to get a boring old school. Well, I never thought I'd say this, but I envy you. This is a miserable job. Are you still looking for more accountancy work? Yes, I certainly am. I told one of my teachers, Miss Winters, about you. I said you were fantastic. Oh, did you? I'm very flattered. Well, she's in a bit of a bind with her income tax. And when I told her you used to be with the Inland Revenue, she was very keen to meet you. Thanks, Primrose. Remind me to pay you a commission. I'll hold you to that. Bye. Bye. Oh, Charlie, I think I should warn you about something. What? She's not married. Bye. Uh -huh. All these? Well, after I got this flea in my ear from Jackson, I rang round every one of our suppliers. They all had the same story. So it's not just our hot bill. Bristow's a bare-faced liar. But when you did his books... Yes, all these were outstanding then. But he swore he'd settled them before he went abroad. Well, I got in touch as soon as I found out. I thought it might help. It might well. How? Well, you remember Bristow said his price included buying us heaps of goodwill? Yes. I don't see much goodwill here. We got a piano, Sid. What do you want to go buy another one for? Oh, well, no, no. I didn't. You stole it. No. What, you found it? No. <laughs> What's for tea? Mm. Can you help yourself mm. to that? Mm. Mm. Lovely boy. Good boy. Everybody got everything? Mm. Lovely, Mum. Oh, let's have a try of this. Well, call me dense if you like, but how did you get that piano, then? Well, it's very simple, Charlie boy. Mm. Pass me the sauce, will you? Mm -hmm. Victoria, that's it. Mm. Here, Ma. Mm -hmm. I think I'm back on this to mark a catch-up, you know? Mm. Oh, Lovely, yeah. Well, 
You know that Fred up at Oak Tree Farm? Mm. Well, he's got a piano that he wanted to get rid of. So he says to me, he says, Larkin, you want to buy a piano for 15 quid? So I said, yeah, all right, I'll take it. On one condition. He said, what's that? I said, that you deliver it. So he says, all right, well, we all know how heavy a piano is, don't we? Mm. All right. When he finds out how much it's going to cost him, you know, to have a couple of lads and a van to deliver it, well, he's not very happy, is he? So I says to him, I said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll take it off your ads, providing you give it to me for nothing. So he says, all right. And then what I do, I'll get him, his wife and his two sons to help me load it on the back of the truck. Didn't. <laughs> Did. So now he's got extra space. And you get a free piano. Now I've got more than that, cos I've got a bloke who wants to buy one for 30 quid. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Bob. <laughs> well, like I say, make a marvellous counsellor, your father, with a brain like that. Rubbish. Mm. It's lovely, this Mark. Absolutely. Mm. Beautiful, as usual. <laughs> mm. Oh, Charlie boy. What's up with you? Hmm? So you got your thinking cap on. Want to buy a piano? No. But it might be the way to buy a brewery. I couldn't take more than a couple of blokes in a van to shift Bristow's. <laughs> what do you mean? Pop, Bristow says the goodwill of his company is worth about £3,000. Now, I know that he happens to owe more than that in unpaid debts. The rest of his company is mortgaged to the bank. So what I'm thinking is this. Suppose we forget about the non-existent goodwill and ask the bank to give us the same mortgage that they've given to him all these years. Now, don't fool you, Charlie. What it amounts to is this, that we could buy the whole kit and caboodle without laying out any money at all. The brewery would be just like your piano pop. After all, all Bristow wants is to get shot of it. That's brilliant, Charlie. That's brilliant. Well done. Thank you. Yeah. Sounds too clever for words. I told Miss Winters you were a fantastic accountant. Now, yeah, see what you mean, Charlie. Well, it's worth, you know, worth having a go. It's one thing, though. What's that? Are you, uh, you going to see the bank manager yourself? No, no, I shan't go. Marriott and I have an arrangement. She's much better at that kind of thing. Oh, good. That was just what I was going to suggest. Marriott, I think an extra dab of perfume behind the ears might be helpful. Next on the agenda is Grass Verges. Mr Baker's mower has broken, so we do need a volunteer for a week or two. Come along, Robert. Here we are. Excuse me, we are holding a parish council meeting. Are you people handling the vacancy on the RDC? Yes, we are. But... Good. Tell them, Robert. Yes. Um, my name is Captain Robert Battersby, Her Majesty's Coldstream Guards. We know who you are, sir. I am formally giving notice. No, sir, you are not. You will do it at the appropriate time. Now you will kindly leave us and let us get on with our business. Ghastly man becomes our counsellor. Do you know that he and his wife want to turn South Hill into a sand quarry? This is Dawes. When a man leaves the army and hangs on to the rank of a mere captain, we're dealing with a particularly nasty piece of work. The whole thing is unthinkable. Quite unthinkable. <laughs> oh, I'm proud of you sometimes. Fancy being inspired by a piano. <laughs> oh, what's that? Huh? This oh. time of night? I better go. You can send them away, wherever right, it is. <clears throat> Marion Winters. Marriott, this is Miss Winters. She's one of Primrose's teachers. Hello. She tells me you're absolutely amazing with figures. Oh. <laughs> I'm Mrs. Charlton. Oh, how do you do? Pleased to meet you. The thing is, I run a travel business part-time. Coach trips up and down the country, sightseeing, that sort of thing. And I'm desperately looking for someone to sort out my affairs. Mm. 
so to speak. <laughs> Primrose said you might be able to cast an eye over my assets. <laughs> Of course he's all right. Bad news travels like an express train. You'd have heard by now. The old homestead does seem a little quiet without the thunder of tiny feet. Oh, right, thank you. Which reminds me, it's about time Charlie and Marriott gave us another grandchild. Brewery thing. I'm sure they get round to it. I'm yeah. so tired, bless them. Well, are they? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, in fact, I'm uh, rather frisky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Easy way. What's the matter? It's enough of that, Sydney Larkin. You keep your hands to yourself. I'm not in the mood. You what? You what? You're not in the mood. You don't want none of your hanky panky here. Yep. Good night. Good. There's no other word for it. Ennobled. My friends, this was a revelation for me. Of course. It'd be a different matter if you was rural district councillor. Suddenly I realised that nothing worthwhile can what? ever be achieved without struggle, <laughs> without physical <laughs> hardship. Jezebel! Every sinew you. must be strained. We must strive for <laughs> the very bones <laughs> ache to achieve the magnificent <laughs> climax. <laughs> Victory <laughs> in life's race. <laughs> we Come here. Know. I want to hold the cabinet meeting. <laughs> Captain Battersby wants to turn it into a sand quarry, I heard. Sand quarry? Who told you that? Edith. No, he'd never get permission from the council. Oh, you don't know. He's put himself up to be on the council. Who said that? Edith. Blimey, strike a lot. Who'd vote for him? Well, huh? sand quarry means jobs. And jobs means votes. Who told you that? Edith. Edith. Also mean the end of a beautiful piece of countryside. Well, there's something you could do about it if you wanted to. I know. Fancy a cup of coffee, General? Oh, I, I last no, no, I think not yet. I have to visit the sick friend, you know. Mm. No time. All right. I'll just have to wait in there and hope I don't lose my nerve. The very best of British luck, Mariette. I'm sure you'll charm the hardiest-hearted slave of mammon into submission. Mwah. See you, General. Yeah. Thanks for the company. Uh, no, 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 no.
<clears throat> Mrs. Charlton, I'm Diana Parker. Oh. Banks do occasionally appoint women managers nowadays. Oh, excuse me, dear lady. I wonder if you could direct me to Farnsworth's. Uh, it, it's, oh. an, it's an auctioneer. Oh, yes. Bridge uh, Street, Bridge I Street. believe. Bridge Street, Bridge Street, yes. Yeah, it... Now then, Bristow's Brewery. I understand you and your husband wish to purchase it. How much do you know already? Only that the present owner is a customer of ours and you and he have apparently agreed a price. That was before we found out that Mr. Bristow has more than £3,000 in unpaid debts. I see. I haven't actually had a chance to meet Mr. Bristow yet. I only took over the branch a couple of months ago and he always seems to be abroad. Presumably you'll want to renegotiate. Oh, yes. Your new offer being? Oh, well, to Mr. Bristow, nothing. Perhaps you'd care to elaborate on that. Well, the offer we propose is directed at you, Miss Parker. We're willing to take on the mortgage, but we certainly don't intend to pay anything for goodwill that isn't there. In fact, as Mr. Bristow owes money to practically every tradesman in the area, including us, by the way, all he's handing on is a large amount of ill will. It's on the verge of bankruptcy, Miss Parker. I'm well aware of that. What makes you think you could save it? to do it, Pop. If nobody stands against Captain Battersby, we'll have a sand quarry in our back garden. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, thank you, thank you, and you all be seated, thank you. Yep. I now call upon the candidates wishing to put their names forward for election for the Rural District Council. I propose Captain Robert Battersby. Is the person nominated prepared to stand? Yes, I am. Seconds? Mrs Battersby. So noted. Anyone else? Are there any other candidates? Is there anyone else? No. Prepared to stand. Yes. Mm. Uh, yes, yes, I am, General. Bravo, Mr. Chairman. Seconds. Yes, you said it'd be a walkover. You said there wouldn't be anyone else. Well, I was wrong, Robert, for once. Oh. Now listen. This Larkin chap is obviously popular. Now, Ambrose, see what you can find out about him. Try and dig up some dirt. Have you spoken to the Brigadier yet, Robert? Not as yet, no. Well, I think it's time we put some pressure on there. <laughs> Do it. So we like horses, then. <laughs> Love them. To ride all the time. Gymkhana's, point to points. Doesn't seem possible now. Hey, I've got some news for you. What? Bristow's on his way back. No. Shh, I'm not supposed to tell anyone. Creditors Inland Revenue would be far too interested. So I'm just letting you know unofficially. Even this horse isn't supposed to know. Why is he risking it then? Well, there's a, an annual open day for the trade last week in October. Publicans and people. Well, it's more goodwill. Looking for another buyer. Not necessarily. Well, our agreement's up on the 30th. No news from the bank yet. Oh, still waiting to hear. Oh, Tom. I can't have a feeling that even if the bank says yes, we're making a terrible mistake. All that debt we'd be letting ourselves in for. What you need is a spot of lunch. Come and share my sandwiches. I know a great place for a picnic. 
picnic? In this weather? Yeah. You only get one turn in this life, Mariette. One chance to make things different. Look at me. Do you know, a couple of years back, I tried to find a way of buying Bristol's. I dreamed of being something big, something successful. But that's all I did. Just dreamed about it. But you and Charlie, you've got the nerve, the spark. I mean, this latest idea of his, it's brilliant. It works. It took brains. I could never have done it without your help, Tom. Oh. It's not for me to try and get you into deep water. Mm, I want things, Tom. I want to run a business. I want to be independent. But I also want to have time to spend on a family. It just seems hard to have both. If anyone can, Mariette, it's you. say you'd had this travel business? It must be five years now. And you've never received any income tax returns? Oh, well, I may have. I tend to throw away anything I don't like the look of. Milk? Please. Mm. Now, let me get this straight. Finger cream? What? Thank you. You organise the trip. You arrange the travel, the accommodation, the food and so on. Look, there's a trip to Scotland coming up at half term and I'm going on it. Why don't you join me? That way you'll be able to see how the business works. Well, I... No, I don't think that'd be possible. Oh. Oh. Maybe you don't care for hiking. Um... Well, I've never really tried it. <laughs> Well, how do you know you like anything until you try it? Oh, who's that? What? Looks like the press. I can't imagine why the press would be interested in us. Mr. Larkin, Mr. Larkin, would you join us on the platform? Captain Batman, join us on the platform. Captain, that was because you sit here, Mr. Larkin, will you sit over there, to my left? Yes. Right here. The ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. The purpose of this meeting is to hear from the candidates nominated for election for the vacant post on the Rural District Council. Each of the nominees will have five minutes for their election address. But first of all, are there any questions about the procedure? Mr. Larkin, can you tell us if it's true that you're not married to the woman with whom you've had seven children? Oh, please, sir, when I invited questions, I didn't anticipate anything. <clears throat> yes, yes, that's true. And is it true that you were once accused of committing an indecent assault upon a Mrs. Jedda Boehm? That was a frame of a judge from our court. It was Oh, Wasn't there some scandal about some stolen money that was found at home farm? Oh, hold her, please! We were helping the police. The police. Uh, hold her, hold her. Just hold, hold her. Hold on a minute. Hold on. Hold on a minute. Hold on, will you? Look, I can answer 
all that if you just give me two minutes, Mr. Larkin. Aren't you going to read it out? No, I don't need so. No. Can I see? No, picture. No. Hey, hey, just give me. Violence broke out last night when candidate Sidney Larkin tried to dress Guys, an election that meeting. Violence. Violence. Can you see that the picture. Took... Don't stand much of a chance, do I, after that little lot? Sidney Larkin, are you ashamed of the way we brought these kids up? No, of course I'm not. Have you got guilty secrets you don't want people to know about? No, of course I haven't, but I thought... Well, you know what thought did. Followed the dust cart and thought was a wedding. Ladies uh, and gentlemen, <clears throat> um, my name is Sidney Larkin and I'm standing for councillor on the local rural district. Don't council. want anyone preaching free love, not in front of the children. Well, no, no, no one's going to be preaching free love. <laughs> but one won't be safe walking the streets. Look, I mean, don't you want to talk about important things? I mean, things that need to be done. That there are plans to make a sand If you're not married, that makes your children illegal. Look, just mind what you're saying, will you, madam? Oh, I don't think a prospective counsel ought to lose his temper, do you? I'm not losing my temper. No, I just said uh, no, no. that's got nothing to do with it. Which is, I'm not losing... You ought to go to some real work, eh? Work, I see. Visitors, Mr. Bristow. Well, hello, you two. Please sit down. I expect you've come to talk about finalizing the deal. Not quite yet, Mr. Bristow. Just have a glance at this, would you? Welcome back, by the way. What is it? It's a list of the brewery's larger outstanding debts. By the way, it includes our account for hops. Ah. There's over £3,000 worth there, Mr. Bristow, which is a little more than the amount of goodwill you said we'd be buying. I'll have the bank settle them in seven days. I have the most extraordinary sensation of deja vu, Mr. Bristow. Do you know, you used almost exactly the same words two months ago. Well, I hope they are settled within seven days, because if they're not, I'm afraid our deal will be off. Good day. <laughs> well, I've never smiled so much in one afternoon in my entire lifetime. Oh, my feet hurt. Well, not your feet, my face hurts. <laughs> what was that then, Sid? We've been out canvassing. Oh, all right. Usuals? Yes, please. <laughs> nice to see somebody's happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, thanks. 
written on my back or something like that. No. <laughs> Maybe I've got a swallow nesting in me hat then, have I? <laughs> eh? Something's tickling everybody's funny bone. <laughs> what is it? That'll be fine, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's the joke, Fred? Enough's enough. Come on. Who? What's the joke? Let's in on it. Come on. All right. Well, <laughs> Have you seen that, Mark? Where'd you get this? Someone left a pile of them here this morning. Who? I said who? <laughs> I want to know who is trying to make a fool out of my old man. You, no, you, the, the, the Battersby's land agent, Mr Ambrose. He was here. So Mrs Blooming Battersby. Right! If it's war she wants, it's war she'll get! You should never have done that, Fred. You should never have upset Ma. If I were you, I'd put away all your breaker balls. Oh. you hide yourself. Hello. You wanted to see my expenses. Oh. Mr. Charlton, Cedric, have you given any more thought to my suggestion? Oh, the hiking trip? Yes. Well, it would be a good way to see how the business worked. Good, then you'll come. Ah, uh, well, now, now that might oh, be a bit Cedric, difficult. I've always found you a very attractive uh, man. Miss Winters. Oh, Marion, please call me Marion. Marion! Marion! Oh, Marion, that makes you even more irresistible. Charlie! Oh, Rest oh, those oh, oh, telephone. Can you call them back? What's going on? Um, y your husband was helping me with my tax problems and... More like your sex problems! Oh. Wait! Hi, everyone. Right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. And tonight, I am reconvening the meeting that ended such a shambles last Thursday night. Next week, you'll have an opportunity to hear Mr. Sidney Larkin speak, but tonight it is the turn of Captain Robert Battersby to make his election address. <laughs> I would like to explain my Big up! and persuade you uh, to vote me onto the lo the rural district council. It is my inte our intention to convert South Hill, which is part of my our property, into an open cast sand quarry. It's an absolute disgrace. Yes. Uh, but wait a minute, this will provide a great many jobs. Uh, think of the income that such an enterprise would bring into the coffers of this council. How much, then? How much will it make, then? Well, I haven't worked it out in detail yet, but... Let us be saved! 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 Who is this woman? This is natural child. The agony was in the army in India. It's his other wife, child bride. One all, I 
think, dear? Here's to Marta Hari <laughs> and her <laughs> mum. I never thought I'd get away with it. Wonderful, <laughs> wouldn't she? I wish <laughs> I'd come. Use my bedspread now, look. You think the batter's bits to play fair? Yes. Well, no, I hope not. I want to see what your mum gets up to next. <laughs> oh, what I've got to get up to next is your supper. Oh, jolly good idea, Ma. Oh, that was it. Oh, Charlie boy. Just in time for a snifter. Oh, you did not. Miss a good time down at the village Actually, hall. I was looking for Mariette. Oh, she didn't come here, did she, Victoria? No. <laughs> Yeah. No. It's just that she went out about an hour ago and I haven't seen her since. Well, I wouldn't worry. She's probably popped round to somebody's house. Actually, we had a bit of an upset. Oh, dear. What about? I told you, Charlie. I warned you about her. Warned you about who? Miss Winters. Who's Miss Winters? One of my teachers at school. We call her Carry On Marion. <laughs> Carry On Marion? <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> dear, oh, dear. Oh, Mary, you are not serious, are you? I think I've left home. 